China isn't going to take trash from the U.S. anymore. Last year, the country announced it will no longer import America's contaminated recycling. And with nowhere to go, the question is what becomes of all that material? As Rebecca Thiel reports, people in, in Indiana are searching for ways to prevent potential recyclables from ending up in a landfill. For some folks in rural Johnson County, these drop-off bins were the only way they could recycle. But today, they're not there anymore. The county discontinued them July 31st. The recycling district couldn't afford to pay haulers to take them. Executive Director Jesse Biggerman says no one supervised the bins, so the recycling often got contaminated with things like greasy pizza boxes. Now that China won't take low-quality recycling, Biggerman says the material in bins like these isn't valuable anymore. And if no one wants it, then unfortunately, those items will sit idle. And at some point, they will find their way, either contaminating you know, the environment around them or going back into a landfill. Few recycling districts have had to stop service, but others have decided that, like China, they simply can't accept some items anymore. Greene County stopped taking glass, and Monroe County won't recycle plastic bags and shrink wrap. Eliza Pokrell is the community outreach coordinator for the Monroe County Solid Waste District. There's, there's too much, okay, and the, the recyclers who handle that do not want to deal with it because they don't have any place for it, and we don't have a vendor for it. While the value of U.S. recycling is low, the cost to process it has gone up, and that cost gets passed down to Hoosiers. Brownstown only had to increase its rates by 50 cents a month, but clerk treasurer David Willey says the town just raised them two years ago to get larger recycle bins. The time before we went to the carts, a lot of people, you know, didn't like that big of an increase. Some of Indiana's recycling gets sorted here at Rumpke's Material Recovery Facility in Cincinnati, Ohio. Steve Sargent is the company's director of recycling. He says China's standards are much stricter than what the U.S. recycling industry is used to. No more than 0.5 percent of the material can be contaminated. Can our industry hit that on a consistent basis? No, we can't. So what's the solution? Sargent says U.S. consumers need to start treating recyclables less like trash and more like what they are, products. Take cardboard, for example. By itself, recycled cardboard is very valuable especially with the rise of companies like Amazon. But Sargent says when that cardboard gets jumbled together with other things, it becomes dirt cheap mixed paper. The value of mixed paper today on the index, which we sell against, is zero. Now, you can't make much money when you're selling 30% of your mix in a recycling plant at zero. Sargent says he gets it. People want to recycle as much as they can. But when folks throw the wrong items in the bin, they risk sending more recyclables to the landfill. Sargent says the industry needs to find a better way to teach people what's recyclable and what's not. A very basic message. So we want plastic bottles and jugs, small mouth, large body. We don't want tubs, we don't want butter dishes, we don't want all this food packaging waste. That's the material that's been contaminating us. And if Hoosiers can manage to keep their recyclables clean, there may be a silver lining here. Allison Mitchell is the executive director of the Indiana Recycling Coalition. She says with some improvements, Indiana could process this excess recycling right here. The issue then would become making sure there are markets that want it. One really easy way to do that is support and purchase from manufacturers who use recycled content in their products. Sargent says adapting to the China ban won't be cheap, but that Rumpke has invested too much not to give it a shot. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Rebecca Thiel. Experts say single stream recycling, where people put all types of recycling in one bin, can further contaminate the load. The Johnson County Recycling District has considered switching back to dual stream recycling, where paper and cardboard are separated from other recyclables.